Welcome to Inside Your County Government and our Gift of Information series. We do this series every year around the winter holiday season with the idea that we want to give the gift to our residents of Charles County in some way. And for this year's Gift of Information series, we're focusing on things that residents can know to be more engaged, more educated, and more involved in their county government and their community. In today's episode, we are talking about the legislative process and legislative proposals, how residents can have their voice heard in this process. Joining us today is Danielle Mitchell from the County Attorney's Office. How are well, you, Danielle? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks. So, Danielle, can you start by just telling us who you are and what you do for county government? Sure. Uh, my name is Danielle Mitchell. I'm the Assistant Deputy County Attorney. So, essentially, I'm one of a very small group in the County Attorney's Office who handle legal matters for Charles County government. Essentially, my client is uh, the departments of Charles County, the county commissioners. Um, we handle everything from animal control matters, zoning issues. We will um, enforce building and zoning violations, things of that nature. And also as a part of my job, I do handle the legislative proposal process at both the state level and the local level working with our state delegation. Awesome. Thank you. And how long have you been with county government, Danielle? It will be about nine and a half years. Congratulations. Yes. Thank That's you. a long time. You're coming up on your decade of county government. Yes. You know, time flies when you're having fun. I guess say. so. When so. you're having fun and when you're, I'm assuming, super busy. Super busy. Yeah, That's your, for sure. Your office does not have a kind of a quiet season, correct? No, there is really no quiet season. There is always plenty of work uh, to go around. So, no, but we're looking forward to having... Um, I guess for the month of December, that second half, there'll be a bit of a lull Good. because of the Board of Commissioners not meeting. So I am helps. so happy for you that Thank by you. the Board of County Commissioners <laughs> taking a break, you kind of also That's right. can focus on other things. Good. Um, so, no, good. I good. hope you can take some time off, too. Thank you. Try. Excellent. <laughs> All right. So legislative process. You already yeah. said state level and county level. Right. Can you talk kind of big picture to start. When we say legislative, I mean, we throw that word around, right? Yes. And we all remember how a bill becomes a law and yes. the song, Schoolhouse like Rock. Schoolhouse Rock. Yes. When we say legislative proposals, what yes. are we talking about? So we are talking about proposals or ideas that originate with our residents, uh, groups in our community, really anyone who is not the typical legislator, meaning okay. our board of county commissioners or our state delegation. So these are proposals that come in written form for an idea to change um, a state law or a local law. So it could be an amendment. It could be to add new laws, mm -hmm. or it could be to take away or delete um, from the laws. Okay. So those are essentially what legislative proposals are. They are ideas to create bills. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we talk state level first? Sure. Okay. So state level, what does this process look like? When does it happen? Who's involved? Right. Yeah. So I would say there's, there is a specific timeline. Um, and that is because the General Assembly has a 90 day session. And so when they begin to meet in January, we want to be prepared, have our package, our requests, uh, so right. to speak, to the delegation well before they actually start their General Assembly session. Okay. So around July of every year, annually, um, we will advertise for proposals. Okay. We will ask our residents, members of the public, submit any ideas you have for additions, amendments, deletions to the state law. Okay. Um, that process, we will entertain those proposals and accept those for about a month. And then by the end of August or so, um, we will have prepared to hold a public hearing. That public hearing typically happens in September and the commissioners will hold that hearing. They will invite the delegation, so that's our state senators and state delegates, to attend that meeting along with them. And they will ask those that have submitted proposals to come out and explain why this proposal is needed, what they think the impact will be, um, if there is any sort of financial component to it, what mm. they think that will be. So it's really an opportunity to hear directly from those that are proposing the legislation and for the delegation along with the commissioners to get that information firsthand. Okay, excellent. Excellent. And um, then what happens? So after the proposal public hearing in September, the commissioners will then schedule a work session. Um, that work session is just for them amongst themselves to publicly discuss 
debate, consider the proposals that were part of that public hearing um, in September. That work session normally happens at the end of September or going into October, okay. sometime in the early part of October. At the end of the work session, the commissioners will vote up or down on whether or not they want to support the proposals. Which but doesn't make anything become a law. It doesn't it's make It's just whether it's going to go to the next level, right? That's, that's okay. correct. So the support of the commissioners signals to the delegation, this is something that's been vetted by the local government legislators, and they are interested in pursuing this. It still doesn't make it a law because the commissioners don't have the authority to change state right. law, but it does give the delegation who do have the ability to advocate in Annapolis for these bills, um, it gives them an opportunity to do so, knowing that the commissioners are in support of it. Okay. So we create that package in October, and we will submit it to the delegation sometime around mid to late October. Um, once the package is submitted to the delegation, it is essentially out of the hands of the county commissioners. Right. Um, it becomes the delegation's work to decide whether or not it's, these are things that they want to see happen and whether they're willing to essentially put in the political capital or the will to right. move it through the process, which okay. can be... Um, you know, fairly extensive in a short period of time. So they will meet, the delegation will meet um, all of our state senators and delegates, and they will decide whether or not they're going to support or which proposals, I should say, that right. they'll support. Um, once they do that, they can then submit them for bill drafting. And that will happen, you know, any time between November into January, they could be submitted for bill drafting. Okay. Um, once a bill is drafted, typically we receive a copy of that and we're able to say, um, you know, if there's any suggested changes that we had, if this bill comports with what it is that the commissioners are really looking for. Because at this point, if I, mm -hmm. resident Doria Fleischer, mm -hmm. am the one who submitted the original proposal, mm -hmm. once it goes through the Board of County Commissioners, I'm, as a resident, I, I've kind of passed it off, right? That's right. Now it's up to the county commissioners to right. add those that's as correct. those, if there's any changes edits. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. And I would say, and then we pass the baton, right, right to the delegation. So this is almost like a big old relay race. And yeah. we hope to get to the finish line in April, which is the end of the General Assembly session. And sometimes we're successful and sometimes it requires us to try again that following year. But um, when we do get that bill draft back, we will make comments. Um, we do try to reach out to the resident or the group, whoever it was that initiated that proposal and say, this is this is how the draft looks. This is the bill number. Do you have any input? Great. And by the way, you can follow the process as well. Okay. Um, the Maryland General Assembly website has a great, you know, there's a lot of good information on there. So you can find out when committee hearings are being held on your bills. You can submit written testimony. There are ways to sign up to do, um, I think, both virtual and in-person testimony. So those are things that the residents can continue to stay involved to do as much of the process. Okay, Yeah, gotcha. absolutely. And then we also make it a point to ensure that there is testimony um, in support of our proposals that become bills. Excellent. So there is a voice or some representation in Annapolis once it goes to the delegation. What's in the past, what's one that sticks in your mind of a really kind of exciting or good, and I don't even mean exciting, mm -hmm. like special, but just like a, <laughs> we're proud of this one that went through. Can you think of one? Oh, wow. I'm putting um, you on the spot. I'm sorry. No, let me think. So, I mean, each year there are good ones, right? So well, I know a couple years ago we had one bill that was to allow um, a we had a local winery mm -hmm. that held and I don't want to get too deep into nope. like the technical weeds, but basically they held a retail liquor license. So like if you think about your typical liquor store, okay. alcohol sales, um, they were not permitted under the existing law to also have this winery license. Okay, so. There was a legislative proposal submitted by the winery to allow for them to hold both of these licenses. So that would permit them then to have their retail operation. They and could, also. And then also do their winery and they could sell their goods in Great. their retail establishment. Um, so it was all about really supporting local small business. Right. Um, it really allowed them an opportunity to sort of take advantage of, of 
being both a winery and a retail right. dealer. So they submitted that proposal. The commissioner supported that proposal, and ultimately it was successful. So now they're able to do both of those things under the law. That's a great example of a small business that realized yes. that the current law really wasn't, wasn't working. working, right? and they were right. able to... And I'm sure that benefited other small businesses and across yeah, the, the state, well which is great. Could, yeah. Awesome. And then there was another, I'm thinking about liquor yeah. maybe because I um, I was staff attorney for our board of license commissioners for a while. So those are the ones that stick out to me. But there was also another bill to allow two, um, li- to allow for two licensees for an on-sale establishment. So like your restaurant bars, uh-huh. they don't sell for you to take away. They sell for you to consume on, right. on premises. Well, we unfortunately... We had our local area. There were other counties that were allowing for multiple on sale licenses, and we were only allowing for one. Mm, okay. Um, so you could have, you know, you could have a restaurant that maybe was located in like the Pinefield area of Charles okay. County. They could hold that license, and then they could hold maybe a license in Brandywine, less than a mile away. Mm. But they couldn't have a license in both Pinefield and let's say Brian's Road, okay. which was a significant distance from one another. So that was sort of a gap in the law that other counties did allow for. Um, that we made uh, a legislative proposal change to. I think that might have been in 2022. Great. So. Um, those, again, are really ways to support local business because there's a luxury license that, you know, if you think about your Applebee's, Chili's, your chains, they already were permitted to have multiple licenses. But, but are your smaller, local ones right. were not allowed to do that. So the commissioners agreed you should at least be able to have two. Um, and a lot of times these are not businesses who are primarily selling alcohol. Mm-hmm. That's really just a nice... A, accommodation or an right. add-on um, for them to be able to offer their their clients. So awesome. Thank you for those yeah. examples and thanks for walking us through that process. Sure. Not a problem. All right, we're gonna we're gonna change lanes, yeah? Okay. Or I guess we're we're changing lanes, but we're on the same highway. Okay. All right. Because okay. we're still talking about how a resident can request a legislative change. Sure. But now at the county level. Sure. So at the county level, um, because we are a code home rule county, so there are different forms of government. And right now we're code home rule, which gives us a lot of discretion over passing local laws. We don't need to go to Annapolis for everything. We do have to go to Annapolis or to the General Assembly for some things. Other things we can handle locally. And so we do the same thing. It's essentially the same process mirrored at the state level for the local level. Okay. So we have a Charles County code and each spring we uh, advertise for members of the public to submit proposals to make changes, additions, deletions to our local Charles County code. Okay. Um, you'll find in our local code, you know, it, it really runs the gamut, but obviously there's zoning items there in, in the code. There's nuisance kinds of topics addressed in the code. We have an ethics chapter in the code. So there are a lot of things that we handle and that really dictate um, a variety of different topics that okay. are contained within our local laws as opposed to our state. These code. don't have anything to do with our Maryland state delegation. Right. This is just this our is, board of county commissioners. That's right. Okay. So the commissioners each spring will advertise for members of the public to submit those changes. They will then hold a hearing that's typically in May. Mm-hmm. Um, and they will hear from the public just as they do through that state process to really explain why it is that that proposal that was submitted is is necessary or needed and what the impact will be. Um, They come back and do a work session following the public hearing, and then they essentially will instruct staff to gather more information, to draft the legislation. It really just depends kind of on um, how developed the proposal is. And I would say that that's actually a fairly important point, that you do not have to have a proposal that verbatim explains what the change will be to the law or that, you know, is really fully developed necessarily. Mm -hmm. It needs to be to a point where the commissioners could consider it, but there's a lot of the detail that will be worked out through the process. And And I, when I hear you say that, what mm -hmm. I think is really valuable in that is that this is accessible to people who don't perhaps have experience in drafting or in writing legislation. It's just the idea of this really is important to me. I think this would benefit our community. I'm going to give the commissioners the idea and hope the commissioners and the staff can then make it something that really 
exactly works and fits. Exactly. Okay. So, um, so that process happens usually going into the summer. And then if there are drafts to be considered and introduced that will, you know, that can happen anytime really throughout the year. It just kind of depends on how much work is needed to get okay. it to a place where the commissioners could introduce legislation based on that proposal. Okay. And then, and then it gets introduced and then goes to a vote. It goes to a public hearing. Okay. And then from the public hearing, it will go to a vote. And if it's successful, typically um, that legislation will become effective within 45 days. So it's a process. It can take weeks, perhaps right. months, but ultimately that proposal can actually turn into a law that becomes a part of, of our code. Which is, I, I love that it shows the fluidity of our government, that, yes. that just because it hasn't been in our code for the past however many years, right. if it's a new thing and we need it, right. it can become one. That's okay. Exactly right. So um, I'm going to put you on the spot again. Okay. What are some examples of some local legislative? Can you think of one that, that comes to your mind that, that's that been kind of a success story of this really did benefit Charles County when it made it through? Well, let's see. So our last session, um, there were a number of proposals submitted. I know that there are still some that are kind of working We're their working way through, through okay. the process. Gotcha. Um, I would say, actually, it's very timely. There was um, last spring, we probably had maybe a half dozen proposals that all addressed removal of an elected official. Okay. And as a part of that process, and there there were variations. So again, there was probably a half dozen. Some of them spoke to maybe a recall provision mm -hmm. where this would be something that could be initiated by the residents. Others called for different standards that would trigger because everybody can removal. submit whatever they want. They so I can say Doria Fleischer wants this, but you right. can submit Danielle Mitchell thinks this. Exactly. And then the commissioners take those and kind of correct pull the points that they think are the most exactly important, the most valuable. Right. Okay. And so um, there were a number of them that were all getting at kind of the same topic okay. that there should be this ability. Um, if some, if, if the citizenry is not, you know, is essentially not satisfied with an elected official, there is no mechanism right now for any change to be had okay. with that. Um, with that official. So as a part of that legislative proposal process, we did create a draft um, removal bill. Okay. That bill was introduced by the Board of Commissioners and it's had its first hearing. There were a number of comments that came from that hearing and there were requests from the commissioners to really go back, listen to that listen to the comments and figure out ways to be responsive to those comments. So we're still working through the process, but it began with that local legislative right. proposal process. It's, to me, and I mean, Danielle, you know, I'm such a, mm -hmm. I get so passionate about mm -hmm. community engagement and two-way sure. dialogue between government and its residents. But what I hear you saying is residents said, this is something we're thinking about. Commissioners and government staff went back and said, okay, if, if they're thinking about this, we could do it like this. This is the best practice. Right. And then came back and said to residents, hey, did we do it right? And residents were able to say like, yes, no, well, right. we wanted this. Well, you forgot about this. Have you thought about this? Exactly. And it really is that good two-way dialogue where government's doing its job with the input of our community. Absolutely. Oh, that makes me so happy Absolutely. to hear stuff like that. I love it. I love <laughs> it because that's good. the way it should be. Yes. Um, okay. So... You see a lot of proposals that come in, yes, because everything, you, you yes. look at everything. Yes, I do. Give our community members, please, the gift of information. What mm -hmm. would you want them to know if somebody is sitting there listening or viewing this and thinking, I have something I want to submit. This mm -hmm. matters to me. What's What are kind of some tidbits of information or like hints from a pro? What would you suggest? Okay. Well, I would say pay attention to the timelines that we try our very best to get that information communicated very broadly. Mm -hmm. So we'll do a public notice in the paper. We run on social media. When the time comes for proposals to be accepted, we really try try to get that information out. So I would say keep your ear out for those particular uh, deadlines. Because even if your idea is amazing, if you miss the deadline, yes, it doesn't and, matter. So right, we, we, you got to meet the deadline. Exactly. <laughs> okay. And unfortunately, there has to be order and right. process in order for anything really to be successful. And so part of that is having a period of time that's open for these proposals okay. in order to sort of work through the process. So I would say that would be the first thing. Okay. Um, make sure you get your proposal in. The other thing I would say is is, you know, contact our office. Mm -hmm. If you have questions about 
maybe is, does this already exist uh, somewhere, okay. right? You have an idea, but you're not sure if it's novel or not, or mm-hmm. if there's something that may prohibit it. Um, you can ask those preliminary kinds Just of questions. Just to save some time. To save some time. On both ends, right? Exactly. I'm not going to bother submitting something if it already right. exists, but also right. it saves you time of yeah. Of reviewing and it. And it's education. And it, exactly. So I would say there's, we encourage that kind of um, contact okay. because we do want to be efficient with what we're doing. And if we can save that time or if we can point you in the right direction or tell you what, these are the things that you might need to be aware of um, when you're, when you're submitting something, I think that's, that's useful. So Good. please contact our office if there are questions. Um, and I guess that would really be it. I mean, there's really no, there's nothing too small. Right. There's nothing too big. Um, this is really just about, you know, it's one of the great things about a democratic society yeah. and an open government. You have the ability to have direct contact and communication and really have that that impact. So um, I would just say if you're interested in pursuing something like that, don't let don't let the process stop you because hopefully we've made it a good one. Oh, that, what a what a nice positive thing to end on of like this process is designed to help. Yes, exactly. Beautiful. Right. Exactly right. Oh, Danielle, thank you for joining us today to talk yeah, about the, the legislative pleasure. proposal process on both the state and the local level. I'm hoping that some of our listeners and viewers are getting excited when they listen to this and are thinking yeah. this is something I want to be more involved in, yeah. whether submitting or just showing up at the public hearings and, and hearing what their community is asking for. Yeah, so. that's awesome. a really important point as well, which I should have said. That should have been my third point no, is, you're good. even if you don't submit a proposal, watch out for what has been submitted. There are public hearings for the state and local, and you should absolutely feel comfortable um, to submit your comments. Gotcha. So even if I'm not, proposals. I can say, this is what I like about what Danielle Mitchell yes. submitted, even if it's not something that I'm going to submit, absolutely or this is what right. I don't like. Absolutely awesome. right. Okay. Danielle Great. Mitchell from our county attorney's office. Thanks Thank so much you. for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Please keep in touch and stay engaged. Check out our other episodes in this Gift of Information series. We want to make sure that we are giving you the gift of ways you can stay educated and stay involved in county government. In the meantime, take care, stay safe, stay engaged. For more information on Charles County government, visit our website, www.charlescountymd.gov. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to the county's e-news. You can also get many alerts through the citizen notification system. Don't forget to watch CCG TV on Comcast Channel 95 or Verizon Fios 10. We're also streaming on Apple TV and Roku devices. Just search Charles County Government. You can get all of our great podcast content wherever you get your podcasts by searching Charles County Government. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. 